So a couple things about the mission. After the, the, the launch happens, that's going to be a, a really dynamic event with, with uh, a powerful launch on the F9 going up into orbit. That puts the crew in a safe orbit as they begin their rendezvous towards ISS. As Steve mentioned, that's about a two-day rendezvous to reach the, the ISS. So we'll be uh, uh, docking on the International Space Station around the 28th. During that free flight portion, there's several tests and checkouts that we'll be doing, including some manual flying demonstrations. They'll be uh, verifying the life support systems are working, the, uh, the crew habitation within that closed loop environment that we'll be uh, flying for the first time. As they approach ISS, we get into a close inter in a integrated operations uh, sequence where uh, the, the joint space station control team and the SpaceX control team works together to show uh, and, and complete the final rendezvous. I actually have a video that shows that sequence for those final uh, steps for the rendezvous. I'm happy to uh, roll that now. Okay, here you can see the uh, Dragon vehicle coming up underneath the space station. Uh, this is about uh, a kilometer below ISS. It performs a series of maneuvers to fly radially around to what we call the V-bar. This is the, the velocity vector that the ISS is traveling in, and that will align it uh, up on the docking axis aligned with the docking port. This video is, uh, is extremely sped up, so it, uh, it, it shows things in a, in a much higher speed, but the, the graphic itself is taken from one of the training and simulation runs that we did as a joint NASA and SpaceX team practicing this rendezvous event. As Dragon approaches the V-bar here, it'll be about 250, uh, 220 meters away from ISS. You can see in the multiple camera views what, the, what one camera will be seeing as it, as it looks towards ISS out of the center of the docking mechanism. At this point, the crew is going to take manual control and do a manual flight test. This will be a, a capability that we're demonstrating should there ever be in the future a failure of the docking mechanisms or the rendezvous mechanisms, we're able to manually pilot in the Dragon spacecraft towards the ISS and complete the docking manually. Here, the, the crew will be demonstrating a series of, of translations and maneuvers in the Y and, and Z axis as they uh, really get, get some stick time flying the vehicle uh, manually versus the computer automated control. As that test completes, uh, the crew will then uh, pause the vehicle, put it into a hold state. The flight control team will then be able to transition Dragon back into an automated approach sequence, and it will begin uh, to resume its rendezvous towards ISS uh, once again. As Dragon approaches ISS at about the 20 meter point, there's a built-in hold where we do our final no-go checks to make sure we're ready for the final docking. You can see the Dragon here holding at about 20 meters. At that point, we proceed uh, from that, uh, that hold point for the final docking sequence after that go-no-go uh, verification has been given. At this point, this is all again under automated uh, docking sequence. There's a, a series of navigation sensors that control Dragon uh, to keep it perfectly aligned with the docking mechanism. And then uh, we have the final contact and uh, soft capture. From this point, the, the docking sequence uh, continues where we achieve hard mate and we have a series of hooks that drive to complete the final structural interface. We do a series of leak checks and repressurizations of, of the uh, joint atmospheres and get the crew happily onto ISS as a, as a joint integrated uh, ISS uh, uh, crew team. The, the, the mission at that point will uh, continue for a docked uh, period of time. That duration, uh, we actually have built in some variability to allow us to accommodate mission durations that best fit the needs of the ISS program as well as the commercial crew program to be able to uh, enable the, um, the balance of, of the ISS needs as well as the development and readiness for the crew on mission beyond that. During the docked time frame, there's gonna be a, a series of test objectives we're gonna be doing on the ISS. This is really to shake down and, and demonstrate that all of the preparations and the emergency capabilities we have built into this vehicle uh, have made it reliable uh, as a lifeboat in a contingency aboard ISS, and it's always there as a backup to be able to get the crew members down to the ground if needed, uh, but also a, as a reliable place to, uh, to ferry the crew members up and down on a regular and repeatable basis. At the end of the docked sequence, we'll have a, a a uh, series of events we'll do to prepare for the undock. This is going to be transferring some hardware uh, back 
onto Dragon, removing stuff off of Dragon, putting it back onto ISS. Then we'll begin the undock preparations. This will again be an automated undock. The crew will, uh, will depart station and have about a two day uh, free flight sequence before splashing down safely off the coast of Florida. Uh, at that point, the recovery operations led by SpaceX will begin. They'll get them on the recovery boats and bring them back safely to the, to the Florida coast to hand back off to NASA. Um, you can see, uh, as you've seen on some of this video, there's um, Bob um, Bankin and Doug Hurley, who are our uh, um, astronauts who will be flying with us on this demonstration mission. They um, have jointly executed um, uh, many, many simulations, like I said, a couple of thousands of hours of worth of training and simulation time, um, and, and have been working closely together um, uh, and with our team um, on all of this. Um, and um, uh, we are uh, um, uh, looking forward to, to actually the, the, the day of the launch itself. Um, on that day, it'll be on at about 4.32 uh, p.m. Um, Eastern time, we'll, uh, we'll launch, launch the, uh, the crew. A few days prior to that, we'll have done a, um, um, uh, a series of what we call first of our static fire test. Um, that's where we have Dragon and, and Falcon um, integrated and standing on the pad. We hold Dragon, uh, we hold the vehicle down as we um, initiate uh, the Falcon engines. And, um, uh, and, and, and make sure that basically do a quick check of all the systems, make sure everything's looking great. We're also gonna do what we call a crew dry dress um, rehearsal where um, Bob and Doug will get into their suits um, at the ONC building at NASA and they will um, get ready to uh, um, uh, get into the vehicles, um, come to the pad, go up, go, go across the pad arm, the, the pad crew will be there uh, supporting them as they get into the, the Dragon and we'll, they'll get into their seats, the Dragon will get closed up and um, they'll get all in place. And so we'll basically run that whole sequence um, up to the point of where we were going to launch. We'll do that as a, what we call the crew dry dress rehearsal. Um, and then um, um, on the day of the launch itself, um, uh, it, the, the, the process is the same. We'll have practiced it in the rehearsal about four hours before launch. Um, the crew will get ready to go. Um, uh, about three hours before launch, there they'll be getting transported to the pad, um, and then we uh, we get ready to go through uh, through the launch um, uh, process. And uh, and from there, um, it's uh, it, 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 it's uh, a lot of the similar kind of thing that we do normally for uh, for launches. Um, you know, we the, drag, the the goal of our systems are always to have. Um, you know, dragons fly and falcons fly as consistently and repeatedly um, as possible, whether we're flying crew or not, um, and that adds a lot to the safety and reliability um, of the system. Um, and I think that we have a, uh, um, a infographic that we're going to be bringing up that talks a little bit about what it looks like um, after we launch. Um, and uh, you can kind of get a sense here if you look at this infographic as to what it looks like um, from launch and what the series of events are going to be. Um, I think that probably kind of the, some of the key takeaways from this are going to be that we have, uh, um, you know, once in orbit, um, the uh, the crew is going to be taking and doing a number of, of tests and and uh, 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 various um, uh, demonstrations that they're going to be doing in the system, the things that they can control, um, and things that uh, we need to check out in terms of the life support system and and other things that they'll be they'll be looking at in there. Um, I think that we have a, another infographic that we'll be bringing up. Um, this is uh, talking about as we approach um, space station, and uh, and you saw Zeb's uh, uh, video earlier that gave you another view of how that looks as Dragon approaches space station and gets ready to dock. Um, and um, and then there's one more graphic that I think we'll be bringing up, and this is uh, for return. And I'm um, going to talk a little bit about this in a little bit more detail. So um, Dragon will be um, departing um, from uh, Space Station. Um, and uh, again, similar to the approach, um, Dragon um, was, is fully autonomous. And um, the crew will be able to um, take control to do manual piloting if needed in an emergency situation. But otherwise, it's fully autonomous. And as, it, as Dragon leaves Space Station, it'll get ready for its reentry. Um, and um, of course, it'll jettison the trunk, as we always have done with the cargo dragons, as we did for the demonstration one flight last year. Um, and then it'll uh, come home, re-enter, and um, and deploy the parachute system, uh, the same parachute system that I mentioned. We're going to be doing our 27th and final test of the Mark III 
design today. Um, and uh, and uh, and as we as we de deployed for the demonstration one mission last year, um, and so once the crew is uh, returned um, to the water safely, um, in in less than an hour, our recovery forces will actually have um, acquired the dragon um, and brought it up onto uh, the recovery vessel, um, and we'll have the crew out of the dragon. All of that in less than an hour after uh, after splashdown.